Welcome, welcome. This is Cillian Crane discussing a short story, Too Good to Be True, by Michelle Huddleston. It is a story about redemption, anticipation, and a girl who lost her way. First, let's start with a recap of what happened. Gail, are you snorting my growth medication again? I wanna grow tall like you, Mom. Lol sober. That's it. Three strikes. You're out of here. Lol mother of the year. Welcome to the parish house. Why the F do you live right next to a chasm? Too soon? Why isn't there a guardrail? Someone could fall. Lol sober. That's because no one has died here yet lol hope. Look what I bought lol perfection. Dang it Dave, we have nine umbrellas already. Screw this, I'm running away yet again lol sober. K have fun. 20 months later. I'm back, got my GED been sober for 2 months and I am learning Mandarin in college. But there is no meaning to life. You what mate? Lol sober. I got a study date with honor. Okay just don't run away again lol mother of the year. For f's sake gay boy answer your phone. I'm back lol sober. Oh hi Gail. Why you no answer phone? I turned it off. F. Anyways I am so happy to be here right now and I don't even need the bong lol sober. I never thought I can live a normal life and I can't wait to see what the future has in store for me. Where the f is Gabe and lol mother of the year? I thought she was with you while she is doomed lol hope. Oh f. Exit Lois. Many months later. Do 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 I am with my companion walking next to a canyon. Good old lucky guess of course. Who that? Harriet I found Gail she dead. Oh, that's cool, want coffee lol hope. I made buffalo blue sabi. F lol perfection, she was walking lucky gas the gale of wind caught her umbrella and she fell down the canyon. Well, she died, do you want this to make an effing memorial for her? We bring you here today to honor the lost life of Gail by installing these rails so no one can ever die here again. She accomplished a trust more unforgiving, more impossible, than our West Kentucky University English 100 Departmental Exam. Now let's honor this moment with me reading Too Good To Be True, Lower Recursion. And that's all you need to know about Too Good To Be True, and honestly, I didn't like the book. At first. My biggest complaint with the book is, is that it feels like it's desperately trying to hit all the key notes of an award-winning story. Talk about a single character with major issues that make it really deep and edgy. And have some important character die at the end to obtain maximum edginess. That's why I got after reading the story for the first time. Now I see it as an insightful look at a str character struggling to go through redemption and a modern day take on Aesop's boy Cry the Wolf. When I saw the first and last pages of the story, I honestly thought this would be a story about a drug addict trying to break through and sober. And I found out that this story isn't about drugs. In fact, drugs in this story are just a plot device. Like most of the more stories, the, Too Good To Be True is a drama about an 18 year old trying to redeem herself after being the only one in her family to become a drug addict. I found that premise to be interesting. Most drug addicts in fiction usually have the addict come from a long line of addicts. However, every line needs to have a beginning, which is what Gale represents. And every line needs to have an end, which is what Gale represents. Like most dramas, the mood and tone must constantly shift to keep the story suspenseful. As for how this happens in this story, well, how should I say this? Gale is the center of the mood and tone of the story. What do I mean by that? Well, it's simple actually. Whenever Gale is happy, the mood and tone is happy. Whenever Gale is depressed, the mood and tone is depressing. In a meeting, Gail says living on my own was something I had to do. I had to. I had to see what I was made of. As you can tell, this story isn't a fable. It's a story that reflects the way real people act. The focus of the story is the aftermath of Gail's rebellious teenage years. And yes, teenagers can get rebellious and get motivated to live on their own. An article by Marcelina Hardy shows that 1.6 to 2.8 million teens run away from their home every year. And the motive most people will first think as to why Gail ran away is substance abuse. However, I believe that leans more towards oppositional defiant disorder. As stated before, Gail was rebellious, she wants to live her own life. 
But ironically, at 18, Gail should be starting her life instead of redeeming it. It was then Gail found out that her decision to run away was too good to be true.